Hello and welcome to this film which is all about the primary structure of proteins. Now hopefully you've watched the film that covers the primary, secondary and tertiary structure of proteins in a little bit of detail. Here we're going to look at what we mean by primary structure in a little bit more detail and how it happens. Okay, So we're going to consider the way in which peptide bond formation will give rise to the primary structure of proteins which remember we can think of in simple terms as being the order in which amino acids are joined together in the chain. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves of how peptide bonds form. Okay, so here is an amino acid and here's another amino acid. They've got this unspecified R group in them. Okay, but what's important when it comes to joining them together, I suppose, is the fact that this one's got a carboxylic acid group on it and this one's got an amino group and what can happen when they meet is that this water molecule here that we see in blue, okay, this can be removed and we can form this new bond here between the carbon and the nitrogen and we get rid of water and so this is called a condensation reaction. We should be quite familiar with these by now. Okay, so in joining amino acids together we are giving rise to the primary structure of a protein because the primary structure of a protein is the order in which these amino acids are arranged. Now, strictly speaking, once you've made the chain, these things are no longer amino acids. They're amino acid residues. Okay, So the things that we make the chain out of are called amino acids. We can kind of see the remains of them in the chain. So here is the residue of the amino acid on the left. So that's this one here. Okay, And here is the residue of the amino acid on the right. Now, I mean, there isn't any difference between these amino acids in this particular example because they both got this unspecified R. Okay, but just to illustrate the difference between amino acids and residues of amino acids in a polypeptide chain. Okay, so when we're talking about the primary structure, we're talking about the order in which these things are arranged. Now, in general terms, this side chain, side chain here is represented by R. Okay. Hopefully what we can do is we can look at a chain, we can kind of split the chain notionally where the amide linkages are or the peptide linkages are and we can see what amino acids our chain was made out of. And if we look them up on our data sheet then we might be able to say the names of these amino acids because we can see what these side chains look like. Okay, so now, if you're asking yourself what should you be able to do when it comes to primary structure, well, if I showed you a length of a peptide chain or a polypeptide, you ought to be able to spot the peptide bonds in it. And that's important because if you were to break it down, then you could see what amino acids it was made out of. You could join amino acids together to make a chain. So it's like the reverse problem. Rather than seeing what amino acids are in a chain, you can make the chain from the amino acids. And Remember, we call the amino acids in the chain, the residues. So when we say here that we can identify those amino acids from their residues, what we're really doing is just looking at the chain and seeing what amino acids there were. And we can explain what the primary structure of a protein is. Okay, So if we were asked what bonds give rise to the primary structure of a protein, we'd say amide or peptide bonds because the primary structure of the protein is the order in which amino acids are joined. Okay, so hopefully by now you can see how peptide bond formation gives rise to the primary structure of proteins. We're going to have a look at secondary structure next, but hopefully this one made sense. If you've got any questions or comments, then please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on YouTube.